Hello and thank you for joining us in another episode of the official report filmed right here at the WCTV studio in Wareham with me, your host, Queen Banda. Joining me is the chairman of Wareham Selectmen, Mr. Alan Slavin. Afternoon. Afternoon. No bow tie today. Today we'll be discussing a proposal by a Colorado-based marijuana manufacturer company to use one of the buildings at the Tremont Nail to manufacture their product. Also, the school building committee has voted for a 20-year repayment plan at 3.5 interest. What will this mean to you as a taxpayer and as a homeowner? Join us because more information coming your way. So, Alan, thank you for joining us Pleasure. again. I think we should start talking about the special town meeting taking place tonight okay. at 7 p.m. at the um, town hall auditorium. Okay. To address this uh, proposal by a Colorado-based uh, manufacturer company who are very interested in renting one of the buildings at Tremont Nail uh, to manufacture their product. So tell us about the base of this meeting, what town officials are looking to accomplish tonight. Well, what they're trying to do is we have a zoning article uh, which really encompasses as of right now uh, the footprint of the Tremont Nail facility. And they're looking to change the zoning uh, from basically Wareham Village 1, which is where the uh, facility is, the whole Tremont Nail facility, uh, which again, we've mentioned before, as everybody made the assumption, it was obviously industrial, and it isn't, it hasn't been for a long time. So in order to do any development there at all, you really have to change you know, the available uses and increase what's actually there besides the village one. And that's what this will be today. And included is a bunch of different options as well as the possibility of expanding the marijuana area to another piece. Because basically we had three areas. One was East Wareham, which is really down Route 6 and 28. Uh, institutional, which means like with a hospital, as any it's classified in zoning as institutional. And the last would be industrial. So in this particular case here, the steel building is Village 1 right now. If they change it, it would then become a single area which marijuana-based operations under the state control could locate. But again, if you wanted a brewery, a pottery shop, um, light manufacturing, you know, just all kinds of things that don't qualify right now, and they're all in there, and they'll all be listed, I think, in tonight's meeting. And also, they'll be listed actually in the town meeting, showing you what the different uses are they're trying to add to it. Okay. Now, this company remained anonymously anonymous for quite some time. Now that they have disclosed, now we know who they are, Organa Brands. What does this mean to their proposal on the table? How serious is it now? Well, they approached the town. Obviously, they would go through Ken Buckland, you know, the director of uh, economic planning and actually planning and economic development. Uh, they made a uh, basically inquiry. Uh, they made a proposal for actually uh, leasing the steel building from the town. Um, I don't think it was ever quiet or anything else. Actually, it's, it's you know at the town level they've known about it for a little while because they proposed it there. Um, they basically are sitting back, I think, and waiting. They don't have to really come to Wareham. They could go to Plymouth, which is one town over. Uh, and find facilities there too. Uh, we just have the opportunity to uh, generate, as we've said before, over a five to a 10 year period, depending what the lease would be, um, anywhere from probably from one to $3 million in actual additional revenue to the town. And there's probably some other fringe benefits that would go with the overall program. Uh, it's not a retail outlet, they're strictly manufacturing, which means they can go anywhere in any town that passed, you know, it was in favor of marijuana, you know, in, in the law. It's, it's not a retail license, so they don't sell it to the public. They're not, there's no number of restrictions. We could have 10, you know, marijuana manufacturing facilities in the town of Wareham if they fit into the existing three zones that we have. Yeah. So this is something that's here. The bottom line is that it's an opportunity for the town to generate funds which would go some back to the general fund for basic programs, and at the same time, there'd be funds to put money into Tremont Nail to help develop it. Uh, we've contacted, a, there was a brewery that was talking about maybe having interest in part of the old mill building itself. Uh, there's obviously the pottery people had interest, 
the poverty people we know don't have enough funds to be able to comply with any of the zoning requirements to bring the building up to specs. So what you have is the possibility of having some money to entice other people to come in to help them get started. Without something like this, the town doesn't have the money. You can't put money into something, even through the redevelopment authority, if there's no money coming back in to offset it. Because then you run out of money and the redevelopment authority stops. Okay. Because the idea of a redevelopment authority is to constantly turn money over. So you buy property, develop it, or develop it with a, with a public partner or a private partner, sell it, take your money back, and then reinvest constantly. Now, the, you sound, as a town official, you sound that you are for this particular company to come in, you favor this project, and Ken Buckland is also favoring this project. Um, is the town of Wareham uh, taxpayers, will they be able to vote on this or have a last say in? Yes. Uh, at the, the town meeting warrant for the zoning change, if they don't, Let's, let's, I'll make it, try to make it very simple because all these questions have a lot of different sidebars to them. Uh, the, whoever comes to town meeting has the ability to vote for the zoning change or not. I mean, they could, in theory, you know, they could go in and someone could modify the article and remove the marijuana piece out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, that's a possibility. You know, or they could vote for all of it, or they could vote no for, for none of it. If they vote no completely, um, I think the facility is going to sit and die somewhere down the line because nothing's going to happen there. So something needs to happen. We've, we've gone for 10 years plus from the, actually 12 years since we bought the property with zero. Nobody's been able to do anything. Nobody's been able to get anything off the ground. So, you know, again, we have someone in place at town with a department that wants to do something. Um, we need to take advantage of that and try and have something happen. Um, I saw online the I mean, war. Just as, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. But say Organic Brands, they could go into the industrial park. They could lease a building there. And it's a moot point. So if they want to stay in Wareham because we're, we are a good location because of distribution with the highways and everything, mm -hmm. they don't have to per se you know, locate in that steel building. Okay. But do you think the argument is where they want to be or the argument is some people in this town do not want a marijuana manufacturer company to be located in this town. I think this one here is uh, an issue because it's in a historical complex. And I think people that, are, that have concerns there don't want to, don't feel that it, it should be in a historical site. Uh, there's people making complaints about, you know, the people's college across the, across the dam and stuff which is way outside of the distance that's required by the state, you know, for children versus marijuana. But again, it's not being retail. Uh, they have issues there. Uh, and there's uh, people who didn't vote for marijuana, period. And, you know, again, that's 43% of the town. 57 vote, voted yes, 43 voted no. So that 43%, like anything else, uh, if they have something to really concern about, they can become very vocal. The 57% can be the silent majority. So you have that kind of piece there. I look at it as, you know, did I, I didn't vote for the marijuana to be legal in the town of where I am. Yes. Simple as that. I want to make sure everybody understands that was my position. I don't really have to tell anybody that, but I think it's important for them to understand I voted no. That said, as an elected official, my job is to do what's best long term for the sustainability of the town of Wareham. And I'm looking at the money coming in you know, in looking at the, what's the facilities there, what the downsides are, the upsides, and it almost doesn't matter simply because if they don't go in this particular location here, they can go somewhere else or they can move to another town. If they go to another town, then Wareham, it's a, it's a lose-lose for the town. So there's no upside that way, except the people are happy, but someone else can come in, you know, two days later and go to the industrial park or go down to 6 and 28, or you know, institutional area if they can find something and do the same thing. What's the difference between, you just told me that you voted no, but what's the difference between voting yes to have marijuana shops in a town versus voting no or yes to have a manufacturer, a marijuana manufacturer within the town? Well, you're really not voting no for the manufacturer of the town, you're voting no to allow you know, as far as this case, it, where the location is. Mm. If you're voting no for, say, your town, like Bourne just, I think a couple of days ago, voted not to have retail marijuana in their town. 
I believe that's what I heard two days ago, uh, which f means for Wareham with three retail outlets, people in Bourne who want to buy retail marijuana are going to be coming to Wareham. So we'll probably be sending them a note thanking them for the extra income that we're going to earn. Um, it, it's a, it, it's a, it, it's just a process where people uh, who are against it, they're against it, you know, and they just don't want to see it. I mean, a lot of people feel as though it, it's destroying the fabric of the country and everything else. It, it is another drug. I, I don't consider it much different than alcohol. I don't consider it much different than smoking cigarettes. You know, it's bad for your health, etc. But I can't tell someone you can't do it if it's technically legal. I don't have that right. I don't have that right to say because I didn't vote for it that even though most of the, uh, the majority of the town voted for it, I can't say no. I don't have that right. Tonight there are a couple of questions were listed, topic points that uh, the officials are going to discuss with those who are going to attend tonight's meeting. Yeah, I expect it to be pretty volatile. <laughs> are you, what, tell us about the nature of this meeting. Will people be able to voice their concerns as well or the agenda is set? Well, I have. You know, even though I'm the chairman of the board, we don't get involved with everything. Uh, this particular meeting was put together by Selectman Tidalbaum, uh, who is the chairman of the Redevelopment Authority. You know, he's on that board. We've got two selectmen on the board. I backed away and th didn't think it was appropriate for me to be the on that particular board as chair right now. And uh, basically, Ken Buckland, who's the director again of you know, economic development and planning, uh, and then we have a couple other members there as well. The I'm losing track now, sorry. Okay. See you in a moment there. Repeat the question, sorry. <laughs> What's the nature of tonight's meeting? Again, uh, I, I believe what they've done is the company's gonna come in and do a presentation ahead of time so people know who and what they are. Then the meeting itself will be really an explanation of what's, what they're gonna do for the zoning area, mm -hmm. what, the, what the additions are, what will be available in that facility if the, if the whole thing passes. And then they'll answer questions. Okay. So it's not going to be restricted. You can't ask this, can't do that. It will be an open, it will be an open public meeting. Simple as that. I know that um, some one of the questions that um, was on the uh, on the article was that um, people are concerned with the odor. What if the uh, company gets goes into Tremont Nail uh, as they continue to manufacture their product, the odor that will be omitted from that f particular facility. And it was almost seem as if everything was going to be okay. There won't be any order, there won't be any issues. Uh, my question is just how confident are you guys, town officials, when it comes to this particular company that they are going to obey the rule of the land? Well, they're well established. You know, they're one of the largest companies in the United States right now. Uh, it doesn't do them any good not to follow the rules, regulations, and do what has to be done, because this is just the beginning of a long-term expansion of a industry which is medical and non-medical in nature. Um, they have come forth, and I think, again, you know, basically, Peter would be a better question to be able to answer the question, and Ken, but the information, what I have, says that the order will not be an issue. There's ways to take care of that. Um, some of the other issues that were brought up as far as the facility goes, are really not issues at the end of the day because it's been out there for a while. Any of the problems that have started initially, they've already taken care of. So and they won't be selling. They're just going to be manufacturing, right? They and can't sell retail. What they do is they manufacture and they will sell to the retailer. Or they can take their product and have it delivered to a distributor who can then sell to a retailer because there's many pieces of the chain. But there's nothing that would go out of that particular, wherever the facility is they have for what they do, they do not, the public has no access to the facility and the public has no access to buy from what they do. It only can come from a retailer. So we've been talking about the merits about this company coming into town. What are the demerits? What are you concerned of? I'm afraid I have none. Really? No. I know what they are. They're financially stable. Uh, if there's a demerit at all, it's that someday that our government, which is kind of in flux these days, uh, may really get aggressive because the federal government still does not recognize this business. Uh, they can't put money in a regular bank. There's, there's a couple special banks around now that are willing to take money, but the money's not insured or anything. And um, if the government decides tomorrow to come in and, and through federal 
you know, enactment uh, closed everything down, they can, even though the states have basically uh, are approving it. So you have that piece there where you have a, you have a business which at state level is okay, but at federal level is not. Okay. So that would be my one concern is that, is this viable? Because you have one side says yes, one side says no. All right, so let's move to um, another agenda. The school building committee has voted um, for a 20 year repayment plan at 3.5 interest. Correct. What does this mean to the taxpayer, to the homeowner in Wayham? Okay, I was at the finance committee meeting last night uh, because they were discussing it and one of the members, uh, the chairman of the finance committee is a member of the building committee. Uh, also Patrick Tropiano is uh, the board's representative to the building committee and I believe on Monday they had their meeting and Patrick was pretty insistent on a 20 year rather than a 25 or a 30 because I think, and I didn't see the figures you know, laid out, but I think if you had a 30 year uh, payback versus a 20, it would cost, I think, like $17 million in, in interest payments. They say 12.7 million. Okay. Because he had okay. given us 17. At, at 30 years. Okay. Again, I'm only mm. going by what I heard because mm -hmm. I haven't seen it physically. So even at 12, 12, whatever. So the cost per the individual, if you took the like a 30 year, mm -hmm. the cost per year is less, but the total cost overall is more to the homeowner because you're paying another 10 years. So as an example, say if you have a home that's valued at, we'll use easy numbers, say your home is assessed. It's not what you think your home's worth, by the way. It's what your actual assessment is in your tax bill. So if say your assessment is $300,000, uh, at the 20 year, I believe, and I'm probably on the little on the high side for safety. Uh, it's probably going to be somewhere around 80 cents per thousand. So it's really simple. You knock off the last three numbers, which are all zeros at this point. So you have 300. You times 300 times 0 0.8. It's 240 dollars. That would be your price for the next 20 years. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't go up or down over that period of time. That's a simple way they do it. It doesn't get affected by two and a half increase in your home values every year or anything else. That's a piece that's added on to your tax bill. It's not added on to the value of your house. Okay. So it would be 240. Um, I would have loved to have seen a, a 10 year and a 15 year projection to see what the difference was as well. Well, as you mentioned that if let's say 30 versus 20, you'll be paying less annually, but you're paying more in the wrong run, oh, yeah. in the duration of the loan. Oh, loan. Always. So the more we cut the, uh, the duration of the loan, we're going to pay more and more. You pay which, more per year, but you pay less overall. But once again, that's going to be a tough sell. People always worry about what they have now but or again, tomorrow instead but, of... Yeah, but again, it, it, so let's say it's 240 on a $300,000, as an example. If it's two hundred forty dollars a year, um, and say it goes to, they they cut it even shorter, you know, so the town pays less overall, which means the, the you know, the individuals pay less, and say you go to three hundred dollars a year, you know, when you think about it on a daily basis, it's three hundred and sixty-five days a year. So we're talking about something less than a dollar a day, and I'm sure there are some people that can't afford anything. But for a large majority of the people, uh, that money is, is, you can easily save that money, put money aside for a lot of things. We, we waste a lot of money on a lot of things. We're a throwaway society. Something that doesn't look right, whatever the TV tells you you should have, that you won't buy stuff. You know, we waste thousands of dollars, everybody does every year. I don't care what anyone says. So yes, I'm saying that I can afford it, so it's not phasing me, but I think it's something that's important. You know, we've made comments before about education, who pays and who paid for you versus, you know, your turn to pay. Um, the benefits of the school uh, hopefully will, will bear a lot of fruit for the kids coming behind us. Right. Uh, I don't have any, I don't have children, uh, but people in my age group, uh, I'm concerned about their grandkids, what the world they're going to have when they get there. You know, and if you don't educate people properly and give them an opportunity, it's a problem. Now, so you mentioned the only concern, if any, is that you want to see a 15-year versus 20-year assessment. Would, I, 
I think, you know, and I don't think we can do it. I'm not sure town meeting can do it. And the ballot question, you definitely can't because it's already there. I don't know. It came up in the finance committee meeting last night. Uh, the school committee, I think, is the one that, well, that decides, you know, what, how, what the year payback is, which they voted for 20. Actually, the school committee, you know, the, the, the building committee, the school committee votes tonight, their meeting. Uh, whether or not, uh, I think it's going to get brought up, what if we look at 10 or 15? They may or may not do it. They have the control because basically I think Derek would technically have control of that, but I believe he's given control to the school committee to make the decision. Okay. Now, I don't know whether or not town meeting can change that decision and shorten or lengthen it. It's, it's the one piece out there that's in flux that there may be some concern. So what I've read from this same article is that the new assessment will be available months from now online for the public to, uh, to, yeah. to, to view, which means they're not going to be available when they are voting for this. No, because what you have is you're allowed to go up 2.5% on your base every year. Uh, we don't go up a full 25 usually anyways. So some people's assessments will go up. Some people's assessments will probably go down. Because at the end, of, at the end of the day, you can only go up two and a half percent total. You know, so you always have that up and down. Because certain areas and houses, the sales in that area have gone up, and the, and the houses have gone up there. In other areas, they may have dropped slightly. So it, it all works out at the end of the day. So if you have set, if you're assessed, say the total assessment for the town just as a number to make it seem as a thousand dollars, we can go up two and a half percent of a thousand dollars. But the people say you have four houses in the town, which you don't. Know, and they're all two hundred and fifty dollars. Well, some might go to three fifty, and some might go to like one seventy five. So it kind of I don't want to confuse me, but your actual bill for your tax bill, uh, I'm not going to say it goes down, but you, it will drop a little bit, and the other ones will go up a little bit. But the end has to still be at that mm. that level. Well, my concern here is again, people are not going to be voting based on well informed uh, decision. But their tax bill is not going to go up that much from one year to the next unless they did a lot of work on their house that year and increased the value substantially. It just won't happen. Or unless they're in an area where the house was well undervalued and it gets up. So you really aren't going to see that. Okay. Because you're dealing with, I think we have 9,000 or more homes in Wareham. You know, so it, it, because there's so many numbers, the numbers don't fluctuate a lot. What fluctuates can be, you know, the increase from, the, say, the district charges. And if you, if you had sewer going in, you'd have fees for betterments. But in this case here, it's not a lot. The, the number that I quoted is probably going to be within, I would say, no matter what happens with people's reassessment, I mean, it, was, it might be a 20 or $30 difference in either direction. Okay. Now, do you feel like that we are rushing towards the approval of this school? Do, we, do you feel that we should invest more in um, getting these numbers so at the end of the day, getting our assessments in line. So when somebody, if we're telling somebody you're going to be voting for this particular thing, then it is that particular thing to I've be more. Yeah, a, a straight answer is we're, yeah, because simply we're trying to make a date and we really didn't get started early enough to make the date. And we're, we're trying to force something in very tight time-wise. Uh, it would be easier you know, if we did it, but normally you do this in the fall rather than do it in the spring. Um, and you have this window. We've already gone through this before, you know, and it got turned down the first time, you know, as far as even, you know, doing anything back when we tried the override and everything. So if this fails, as an example, say this doesn't pass at the ballot, we've got, I think, four months or something to go back and get things back in place. If not, and if it's not ready to go again, what happens is then is that you basically go back to square one and start at zero mm -hmm. and have to start the reapplication and everything else. I don't know whether or not the MS, the MSBA will... They're not will, forgiven. That's well, what I heard, that they're not forgiven. And I've heard that they are just to be voted that for them to reimburse us. It's quite an accomplishment and a step that we cannot afford to... They voted to, to reimburse us at a substantially higher rate than a lot of other projects around. Uh, I've, when I go to the uh, Mass Municipal Association annual meetings in January, uh, all the state agencies are there, among other things. And I always stop in to say hello and see where we stand, because it's always curious to see whether, the, when they see where I am, whether they're smiling or angry. Uh, every time I've been there, they're, they're smiling. 
Uh, I've asked them, is everything okay? Are we, uh, do we have any issues? You know, I know we've tried this, it hasn't worked. And they said, no, we're trying to work this out because we think it's very important. Um, I would hope that if this thing, for some reason, doesn't pass this time, uh, we basically are still in the same position. We, they know we're trying. It would be very discouraging if someone was to tell me that if this doesn't go through, don't bother to apply again, because that would be would be very harmful to the town. We have a new business. Well, it's not quite new, but the Stone Path Melt, uh, melt is um, has opened. The yep. um, also they are featuring beer over there. So tell me about what this business is going to reshape. How it's going to reshape or benefit the Wareham community. It really, it doesn't benefit the community directly as far as the individual people there because, again, they're not selling, uh, you know, a, a beer to, to people. They, they basically have uh, products, uh, manufacturing equipment from Germany, and there's only a few in this country, period, and they make their own malt, uh, which is a major ingredient in making beer. Uh, they supply malt in 55-pound bags, so the average homeowner is not going to buy them and they work with craft brewers and specialty brewers and stuff. Uh, they obviously doesn't, they, their malt would probably not go to a place like Sam Adams because people think it's a small brewery, mm. but it's really not. They've got different um, breweries all over the country that make stuff for them under their specs or their own, not like Budweiser, et cetera. Mm. But there's, there's, you see a lot of these smaller brands and they make malt depending what the people want, specifications, et cetera. What they, and, and that's what they do. So it's a very unique niche business. And it's a nice thing for the town, you know, because they're here. There's, there's no odors, obviously, for what they do. Uh, there's really no downsides to all of it. They're working with a water pollution control facility because they have these huge tanks, which they, after the malt's done, they have to dump the fluid. And, and everything's being worked on. There's, there's no conflicts or anything in the business. <coughs> and the nice thing is, what they did is they went a little bit overboard, Excuse me. which is good for us. And they put a little tap room in, which means you can go there and you can get little sample glasses mm -hmm. of, I think, eight different beers. And each one of these beers is, some, is a company that uses their malt to make the beer. So you can go in and get a Stein or a little thing. And it's four to seven, I think, during the day. I think it's Monday through Friday. It, it's a nice, it's a type of business that's good for the town. You know, it, 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 it has no negative impact. Okay. It, it's another source of new revenue. All right. Well, thank you so much um, for coming into our studio again and to digest some of the current events, news in our town. I appreciate your time. Well, we just, you know, as I've said before, you know, people need to ask questions. They need to get involved to find out what's going on. Um, you always hear the word false news on TV. I don't, I don't even watch the news anymore because it, it's just so... You, know, you have no idea what you're listening to anymore. There's so many conflictions about everything and everybody. Uh, so you have to really step out and, and get involved a little bit to find out what's going on. And be well informed. And be extremely well informed because if someone tells you this, like, like this is black, but they'll tell you it's blue, well, you know, you got to search it out, make sure you're not colorblind or something. <laughs> well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Uh, thank you for joining us in another episode of the official report filmed right here at the WCTV studio in Wareham. With me, your host, Quinn Banda. In the studio was the chairman of Wareham Board of Selectmen, Mr. Alan Slavin, and we discussed about the Colorado-based manuf marijuana manufacture company and their proposal to come to the town of Wareham. And also, now that the school building committee has voted on the duration of the loan and to what interest percent, what this will mean to you as a homeowner and as a taxpayer in the town of Wareham. Until next time, I wish you all a wonderful day.